This is Getting Real Estate in Vegas on the Vegas Video Network. I'm Bridget Magnus, your host for the day. Yes, indeed. Yay. So let's go ahead and talk about Vegas real estate. If you have a question, problem, or suggestion, please be sure to send that in via email to gettingrealatvegasvideonetwork.com. Those of you who are, you know, prefer to use a telephone, don't forget we do have the toll-free uh, line. That's 866-966-4599. And also be sure to join us on our live chat if you are, in fact, watching us live. Won't work so much if you're watching us later on. I'm sorry. Um, we would like to take just a minute to thank those of you watching on the Vegas Video Network, those of you who have subscribed to your favorite programming, including this show and Pub Crawl and all of the other fabulous shows through iTunes. Those of you who have found us on YouTube, those of you on your actual old-fashioned television sets using Roku, and those of you who are actually listening on the radio on Friday evenings at KSHP 1400 AM. So let's get this party started with some Friday figures. Thank God it's Friday. Uh, let's see, we're going to start with the number of available units, which is down yet again to 12,120. Median price on a single family home, I'm proud to say, is up. That's right, I said up. I'm still in Las Vegas. I, I did say up. Um, 140,000 is the median price, and it's been a long time since I could say that with confidence. Condos, median price is $55,000. Townhomes, median price is $80,000. Now, I would like to point out that we do have one single family home that is available for un just under $17,000. That's $11 per square foot. It does not include the bulldozer you're going to need to take care of that property. Okay, so of the total, we do have 2,395 foreclosed properties with a median price of 105, 5,482 short sale properties with a median price of 110, and a glorious 4,460 non-distressed properties at a median price that is up to $185,000. Yay, we got some good news in this town today. Um, we did sell in the last 30 days 3,665 properties. Median sales price was 109,000. Median list price was 110,000. So not a hill of beans worth of difference between those numbers. Still no low balls, people. If you want that house, you're going to have to make a reasonable offer on it. Um, we do also have 13,019 properties that are under contract to be purchased. 5,700 some odd rentals, 2,200 leased units, both with a median rent of roughly $1,100. Now let's get on with some news here. Um, you've probably noticed that our inventory is down. Well, someone else has noticed that it's down nationwide. In fact, it's down 17.5% year over year across the nation. Pretty darn good figure when you consider what's been happening to our market. Now, unfortunately, the CoreLogix price index says that um, the prices did drop 1.3% in October. You can't have it all, I guess. Also, California and Nevada are serious about getting, uh, continuing the foreclosure fraud investigations. Now, one little interesting thing that I'd like to point out, do you remember a couple weeks ago I mentioned a 600-count uh, indictment against two robo-signers? Well, funny thing, last week one of the key witnesses in that case mysteriously ended up dead in her Las Vegas apartment. And Metro swears it wasn't foul play. That smells like an episode of CSI to me. Hear that, guys? No, fewer serial killers, more what's really going on in Las Vegas. Okay, speaking of what's really going on in Las Vegas, this week we did have a brand new foreclosure ordinance passed. So let's talk about that because that's kind of the big news locally when it comes to real estate. So then, what does this darn law say? Well, first off, it says that um, banks have to maintain the uh, properties that they own. If it is found that they are not doing so, they have 15 days to, excuse me, they have 15 days after the notice of default to inspect it and determine whether it's vacant. If it is vacant, they do have to list it on a city registry and pay a nice little uh, spiff to the city for the privilege. Um, they do need to maintain the property, and if the city decides that they are not maintaining the property, the city is going to issue a possible 
misdemeanor citation carrying a $1,000 fine or six months in jail. Now, those of us who are living with the aftermath of the foreclosure crisis right here in fabulous Las Vegas understand that we do have a whole lot of properties that need a whole lot of love. And yeah, we do have vacant bank properties that are eyesores in our community and dragging down the rest of our property values. Nevertheless, it isn't going to work. Guess what? That's not my quote there. That is a quote from, um, let's see, Mr. Bill Uffelman of the Nevada Bankers Association. So here we have a high up banker saying it's not going to work. Actually, his full quote was, no bank that is a member of the Nevada Bankers Association has a senior vice president who is in charge of going to jail. Well, that's only one of the issues, uh, the, the base, namely the fact that who are you going to put in jail? Are you going to put some bank teller in jail? Or are you actually going to try and put somebody who, who has authority to say, you know, we got to get that fixed in jail? That person who says, hey, you know, we ought to fix that, he's not in Nevada. How are you going to get him here to put him in jail? You're not. So that is only reason number one why it isn't going to work. So uh, one of the things that they want to take care of is green pools. Now, I realize that this isn't quite the season of the year to talk about it, but we already have a perfectly good way here in Clark County, Nevada to take care of a green pool. You notify the county, and the county will uh, put, put together a citation, and they will drain that stinker and send a bill to the owner of record. And if it doesn't get paid, it ends up as a lien on the property, and they're not selling that property until the lien is taken care of. So as far as I'm concerned, green pools is almost a non-issue. Other things like overgrown weeds, dilapidated properties, those are all things that can and should be taken care of, but this law is not the way to do it. Now, one of the uh, um, big problems here is that sometimes the foreclosure just isn't dead yet. Um, one rather notable case that I know of in our neighborhood was actually featured on one of the big news shows. Um, this property is abandoned. The owner has stopped making payments. The bank did issue a notice of default right about the time they had a fire, causing $100,000 worth of damage. Now, the owner is nowhere to be found. The owner is the only person who can legally say, yes, make these repairs. The bank doesn't own the property yet. They can't make the repairs. We're also talking about $100,000 worth of repairs versus a $1,000 fine. Which do you think the bank is more willing to pay? Yeah, I think they'd rather have the $1,000 too. Now, even if we are talking about the idea of saying, well, bank, you have to fix that property before you can sell it. Well, fine, they'll just let the darn things sit and, and disintegrate because Again, we're talking about $100,000 here, $10,000 there. It, they're just not going to put that money into our communities only for the sake of getting a non-performing asset off the books. So then I would like to end with another quote from Mr. Effelman. That is really asking for trouble. And as much as I would love for this, this ordinance to work out, it is really only asking for trouble. All right, now I do have a very special, very festive surprise for you. A delightful, what were they thinking? Okay, there are two things wrong with this picture. One of them you can see, and one of them you cannot see. The one you can see is that that darn Christmas blow-up thing has taken up half of his driveway. Where the heck is he going to park? I don't know. That's not my problem. Um, the problem that you can't see is that I took this picture a full month ago. Please, don't put your Christmas ornaments up that far in advance. Your neighbors will really appreciate it if you, if you just leave those be another couple of weeks and, you know, wait until... You know, maybe you're actually getting ready to make the Thanksgiving turkey. Well, there you go. We're going to take a couple minutes of a break and be back with some real advice. 
Traditional media believes that after about three minutes, you'll tune out. Most Vegas media companies think if it doesn't jiggle, you won't tune in. At the Vegas Video Network, we think both are wrong. The Vegas Video Network is the first and only live online broadcast network that specializes in insider news and expert views about Vegas. We combine great storytelling with the ability to watch when and where you want on your computer, mobile device, or television. Discover the real Las Vegas. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com. Okay, who's ready for some real advice? Um, today's uh, uh, um, installment is based on stuff that happened in real life this week. And uh, I like to call it for short, um, stupid realtor tricks that could cost you selling your house. Now I realize that not all of you are going to end up with a top-notch realtor selling your home. Unfortunately, I just don't have the time or resources to be everybody's listing agent. I'm sorry, it's, that's just the way it is. Um, if you do, though, have a listing agent on your home, you need to hold his or her feet to the fire and make sure that he or she does not make certain stupid mistakes that could prevent people from making an offer on your home and prevent people from ever finding your home in the first place. By what do I mean by that? I would like to read to you from a, 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 a set of directions to a property. Now, despite the fact that I actually know this neighborhood and had been within a few hundred feet of this property the very morning that I went to see it, I actually had to map this stinker out on my phone to figure out the directions, which begin west on Valley View. Now, would anyone like to, to uh, tell me what's wrong with the idea of going west on Valley View? It's a northwest street. It's a north-south street. Now, now you got me doing it. That's this silly listing agent has me thinking you can go west on Valley View. Uh, if I hadn't actually taken the time to figure out where it was, I certainly never would have gotten there thinking that I could go west on Valley View. So first off, you know, do make sure that they're not making stupid mistakes like sending people to somewhere other than how to get to your home. Now, another thing that um, actually my client that morning brought up is that he would really appreciate it. So that I, I'm telling you all this as a favor. He would really appreciate it if listing agents would take the most honest pictures possible of the property. Don't use little fisheye lenses or things to make the property look prettier than it is. If there's a hole in the wall, it, for goodness sakes, we're allowed 25 pictures in our local MLS. There's no excuse for not including a picture of the hole in the wall. Now, why am I telling you that if there's something seriously wrong with your property, your realtor actually needs to take a picture of it and put it in the MLS? Isn't that going to keep people away? Well, yes and no. It is going to make sure that the people who show up at your door to see your property already have a very good idea what they're looking at. They already know there's a hole in the wall, so they're not going to be scared off by it when they see it. And I guarantee you, if um, you go into a typical house and you, don't, you aren't expecting something like that, that's the sort of red flag that will make people leave so fast you'll hear their tires screeching. So yes, please make sure that your realtor takes the most honest pictures possible and puts in the most honest description possible, both to improve the quality of the people that show up at your door, ensure that they're more likely to stay and look around, and ensure that they go in with open eyes, hopefully, and an open checkbook. All right, that does complete what we have to talk about today. And so I would like to thank you all for joining us. Don't forget, you can still send those questions and suggestions by email to gettingreal at vegasvideonetwork.com. You can still leave us a message on the toll-free listener hotline. That's 866-966-4599. And if you have a personal real estate question for me, look up my contact information at bridgetmagnus.com because I'm looking forward to helping you out. Have yourself a terrific weekend. Don't drink too much, because goodness knows we've all got our holiday parties to go to. Have yourself a terrific day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.